Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm your teacher, Pastor Philip Milms. You're invited to spend the next half hour with us where you'll be taught how to walk in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. Come and join us today as we continue our lesson. We pray that the Lord bless you with revelation and understanding from His Word. Thank you for joining us. Don't think that those things are fully occupying your body one way or other because they don't. The one that you have chosen to yield to, whatever you've chosen to yield to, that is the thing that will be expressed through you. I've watched this happen many times, even in church settings. Good people, people who are filled with the Spirit, they were operating in the Spirit, in the gifts of the Spirit, and then I would see, even in their eyes, a quick change would come over them, and I knew now they were yielding to something else. Sometimes in prophecy, you know, you could tell, okay, you are prophesying by the Holy Spirit, and then there was a shift, and I realized, oh, you've just yielded, and now this is actually something else in the same person. You go, well, that's not possible. It is, and I'll show you how. And, you know, it was clear I could see the change. The Scripture talks about being double-minded. Double-minded, it means two minds or two hearts. It speaks of a split. There's one thing here and one thing here. It's like having two different wells on the inside. Not the same well, different wells. Or just hang in there, listen to me. After I finish, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. We don't have to agree on all things here to be brothers and sisters in Christ. We can still be friends. But I promise you, there is more understanding available to us on these topics than most people currently possess. And it's because they've already made up their minds ahead of time about the way they want it to be. Because there's a reassurance that's like, well, I've said the words, I confess Jesus, now he's my Lord, so that's kind of it. But the scripture says there's a lot of things that we need to do this sort of maintenance level. And if we don't, if we yield to old things, then old things can come back and even come back stronger. They have not fully examined the word on these things. They haven't really walked and, and operated in these areas. They haven't asked the Holy Spirit about it. So there's just some basic misunderstandings. And it's because of the way we think naturally, distance, space, and time. And it just does not work that way in the other realms. All right. If you, again, if you've got your Bibles, go with me over to James chapter 3. And I'm going to start with verse 9. And it says, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. He's talking about the tongue. We do the blessing and, and we do the cursing with the tongue. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. All right, James didn't say it wasn't so. He didn't say it wasn't possible. He said it is happening and it should not be happening. This, these things ought not to be. Verse 11, does a fountain or a well or a gate, does it send forth at the same place, look at the words, at the same place, sweet water and bitter? Okay, the, the answer obviously is no. If you have sweet water and you have bitter water, okay, those waters, that water is coming out of two different fountains. Okay, there's more than one fountain there. Verse 12, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, or either a vine bear figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Now, I want you to notice again the language that's used here about trees, about wells, about fountains. This is the language that Jesus used. It's the language that the apostles used, which lets us know how the temple can become defiled by having more than one tree or more than one well on the inside. Okay, but praise God, we have the power, we have the authority to remove these things out of our temple and to cleanse them. Okay, people bless and they curse with the same mouth. 
I see it all the time, been guilty of it myself. But the mouth is the place where authority is released. Right? The first message, you have to speak to it. It's the place where authority gets released. It is the place where legal rights get released. And the mouth is the place where the fountains of the deep, the fountains of the spirit realm, get released into the natural realm. And they're coming through those who are the arbiters of authority. That's you and me. That's humans. Okay. We possess the authority in the earth, and that's what the enemy is after. He wants to usurp that authority and use it for his own benefit. All right. James says that out of the mouth, out of one mouth, one person is coming blessing and cursing. But these things ought not to be. A fig tree only produces figs. And so if there's any other fruit, then we can be assured that that fruit is not coming from a fig tree. It's not coming from a holy tree. It's coming from some other unholy tree. These are metaphors, of course. And if you have a well of fresh water, the salt water does not come out of it and, and vice versa. So if you have salt water and fresh water that both come from the same mouth, you have a clue. There's more than one well that's open. Okay, at that moment, your mouth is tapped into some other underground or unseen source if salt water is coming out. You know, bitter water is what it means. So James is telling us, if you have two different wells that are open in your soul, now one of those wells, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, is good. It is connected to heaven. And if not, then that other one is connected into the second heavens, and it is evil is connected to darkness. And these things should not be. Okay, remember, this is the church that James is preaching to. He is not preaching to unbelievers. So this applies to us. It applies to me. It applies to you. Let's go back and finish reading the chapter. James 3, verse 13 says, Who's a wise man who's endued with knowledge among you? This is about wisdom. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, where? Your heart, your soul. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Well, this is where most people are. People have these issues and they're like, but mm, no, no, I'm, I don't believe that that's anything but the Holy Spirit. Well, James is saying otherwise, if that's coming up, if that's coming out of your mouth, that's not coming from the Holy Spirit. It's coming from another place. It's not a holy place. If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Say that again. It's earthly. It means it's first heaven. It's sensual. It's, it's based in the senses. It is devilish. It means it's from a demonic root. Verse 16, for where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, this is heavenly wisdom, the third heaven, is first pure. It is peaceable. It is gentle, easy to be entreated. It is full of mercy and good fruits. It is without partiality. It is without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So James says, if you have bitterness, strife, and envy coming out of you, don't lie about it. Don't say that this is coming from above or that this is the Holy Spirit. It's not. Okay, that's not his tree. This is another tree, which is earthly sensual, and James says even devilish. It's coming out of a demonic root that's in the second heaven. There's a place in the soul where access has been granted. Okay, wisdom from the Holy Spirit will be peaceable, gentle, full of mercy, and anything that is opposite of this is not Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of another spirit. All right, and the first steps to gaining freedom is to admit there's a problem. Lie not against the truth. 
Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 22, 23. You should know this verse well. But the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The fruit of the Holy Spirit comes from the well of life coming out of the belly. And if there's evidence of any other fruit opposite of this, then it's coming out of another well. And it means there's still some work to be done to cleanse the temple. Okay, doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you're not a good person. All right, it just means there's still some cleanup that needs to happen so that you can be one of those vessels that Jesus called vessels of honor that's fit for his highest and best use rather than vessels of dishonor. In Galatians 5, 19, which is immediately above those scriptures I just read, Paul says, now he's, he's contrasting, he says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such the like, of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, when you do these things, you are yielding to the lust of the flesh through a demonic temptation. It's not just of yourself. Okay, demons exploit the areas of the flesh. And once you yield to it, you're yielding to that demon and you've given him place. And the more you do it, the more you progressively are giving him a stronger and stronger place. And what went from a foothold can become a stronghold. Now, these things do not come out of the kingdom of God. They're coming out of the kingdom of darkness. And if these things are still operating in your life, just know that there remains a root in your soul that has gone unaddressed. All right, so once you see it, once you know about it, once you understand, now you can address it. And that's where we're heading. We just want to see people get free. All right, Galatians 5 and 24 and 25 says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, crucifixion. Crucifixion of the flesh, of the flesh nature. I'm talking about the sin nature now. It does not happen by accident. All right, it's got to be pers- purposeful. Crucifixion is a violent and methodical approach to killing. All right, we're not talking about literally, you know, killing the flesh, but we're talking about violently coming against those things in the spirit that are being expressed and, and using and exploiting the flesh, the sins of the flesh. And so this is how we're told we should treat sin and how we should treat the roots of those things those besetting sins of Christians that are keeping them from running their race. Either we deal with those things here and now, or Jesus will have to deal with us at the final judgment. I don't know that goes over well too, but he said judge ourselves, right? So if we judge ourselves, if we see those things in ourselves and we judge them, we bring them out into the light with Jesus then we can get rid of those things. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged, right? That's good news. And so this is where healing and deliverance begins. Okay, things have to be brought out into the light. There was a time years ago when several of us were together and we were ministering deliverance to a person. It was a great time, actually. It was really fun. The person, obviously, they were a Christian. I actually don't minister deliverance to non-Christians. We can talk about that another time. But we're ministering to this Christian, and during this session, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge was coming forth, flowing in the ministers as the Holy Spirit was working with us to help bring freedom to this person. And so Holy Spirit would bring up things 
And when, when he did, then we would, you know, we would follow up with it. We would address it. We would say, you know, okay, you know, confess these things, ask forgiveness, let's apply the blood of Jesus, you know, repent, renounce, those kind of things. Those things cut off the legal roots. They cut off the ability of those things by the blood of Jesus. And so we were going through this process. And while a word of knowledge came up for this person, it had to do with impatience. Okay, I'll come back to this. But, you know, we would we'd get a word of knowledge and we would address it with the person and those things, they would leave right away. Right. We were plucking them up, plucking them up by the roots. And because once those roots are gone, then that person shouldn't have to ever eat of that tree again. That's what we're shooting for. And if you've ever done this, ever experienced this, one of the things that marks it is joy, the joy of the Lord. Every time more deliverance would happen, the joy would increase. There's a lot of laughter that would happen. So deliverance doesn't look anything like Hollywood would tell you. It can be dare I say, kind of fun because the Holy Spirit is there and the Holy Spirit's fun. And these are defeated things. We have authority. So the presence of God shows up. It drives out darkness. He heals people in their soul. And then he'll begin to fill that place back up with the joy of the Lord. The joy gets wild. It's, it's very fun. Well, during this time, one of the ministers by word of knowledge called out impatience. And when I heard that, immediately my mind just went tilt, like impatience. That, you know, that didn't sound right because I'm thinking impatience is not a spirit. Impatience is a self-discipline issue, right? And the Holy Spirit knew my thoughts, okay? Before I could barely think them, he answered me. And he immediately responded to that question that came up in my, in my spirit. And he said this, heard him so clearly. He said, Philip, what are the fruit of my Holy Spirit? And so in my head, I began to kind of go through the list. You know, there's love, there's joy, there's, there's peace, there's patience. And I said, oh, patience. And the Holy Spirit said so clearly, so kindly, if patience is a fruit of my Holy Spirit, then impatience is the fruit of an unholy spirit. I'll say it again. If patience is a fruit of my Holy Spirit, then impatience is a fruit of an unholy spirit. And I saw it so clearly. It was just so black and white in, the, in that place where we we're ministering and the anointing was so strong. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. Verse 43, it says, For a good tree brings forth not corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. His. That's actually the word. Then say it's known by its fruit. The tree is known by his fruit. Remember, I said trees should be talked to like sentient entities. All right, the word speaks of this tree like it's sentient. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush, a briar bush, do they gather grapes. Quick side note, when the Bible's talking about thorns, it's talking about the demonic. Well, I have time to address that right now. Verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. It's talking about a single person. One place it calls him a good man. The other it calls him an evil man. It is talking about what tree is producing. Well, does the scripture not say that you can be double-minded? duo, two-minded. You can have two hearts. You can have a divided heart. I'm not talking about this blood pump. It's talking about your soul. The heart, meaning the soul of a person, their mind, the will, and the emotions. We're not talking about your spirit. Your spirit man in your belly has been sealed by the Holy Spirit, and 
I will agree, the wicked one cannot touch that part of you. And that is not what we're talking about. So before you get to arguing, just realize I'm not talking about that. We are talking about a different area, if you will, within the body. It's within the soul. Okay, the Bible talks about being double-minded, and that literally means two minds or a split mind. Okay, what about the one who hasn't crucified the flesh? That's what this keeps coming back to. We're told crucify, 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 kill the flesh, and it means the lust, the sins of the flesh, not the body. Okay, what about the one who's trying to drink both from the cup of Christ and the cup of demons, as Paul discussed in another place? He said you can't. You can, you can only drink of one or the other. Didn't say there can't be two places flowing where you can dip your cup, right? There can be a bitter well and a good well where you dip in your cup, and it should not be. Okay, when demons have been given a place in your life, by your own agreement, they generally do not leave of their own accord. They don't want to leave. They were working really hard to get that place that you gave them. You gave them a seat in the temple, and they don't want to go. And so you're going to have to violently overturn the money changer's table and drive them out. You have to make them leave. They have to be made to go by authority. When I've been teaching you out of Mark chapter 11, it doesn't talk about Jesus making a whip, but obviously, you know, in the other gospel, it talks about Jesus going and literally making a whip and going into the temple and driving those things out violently, scourging to make those things go. They have to be made to go. And so after a person repents, repent, acknowledge, acknowledge that this thing's there. If you've done a sin, own up to it. Confess your sin, right? If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of, and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's where we're going with it. So two steps. There's forgiveness and there's cleansing. So you need to own up to it, renounce it, apply the blood of Jesus to it, and then you tell it to go. Because now legal rights have been removed. When you try to tell things to go and the legal rights haven't been removed, they don't leave. And we know that we have to forgive any that we have ought against. We're going to come back around and address that because that's still in Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Unforgiveness is one of the primary open doors to the demonic. If you have unforgiveness, you're in trouble. Deal with it. The scripture talks about two roots, two roots. Either the tree is rooted and grounded in love, which obviously is in Christ and in the Holy Spirit, or it speaks of a tree which was born out of a root of bitterness. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men in holiness, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. That's not greasy grace, that's power. Lest any root of bitterness springing up like a well. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You know, a root of bitterness in you doesn't just defile you you can have a defiling effect on others. Lest there be any fornicator or a profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. There's more that we could say about that, but that, that verse kind of stands on its own. All right, Paul was speaking in Hebrews. He was speaking to Jewish followers of Christ. They were Christian. And he makes it clear that holiness matters. We're not to allow defiling things in us. We're not to allow a root of bitterness, bitter waters, to come in. All right, salvation does not immunize you from the schemes of the enemy. Salvation doesn't take away your authority. And if you want to give it to the enemy, you can. And if you take his bait, you open yourself up for defilement. Matthew 3.10 says this, and now also the acts is laid unto the root of the trees. The axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. That's our job. Holy Spirit is your battle axe. The blood of Jesus 
is what will take the axe to the root. It'll pull up the root, the tree, and you can throw that thing in the fire so you never have to eat of its fruit again. Our responsibility is to watch over our own souls and to make sure that we keep the doors closed to the enemy. We are to cleanse our temples by the power of the Holy Spirit, putting the axe to the root of any evil thing that we find in ourselves. Jesus will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you when you call upon him. But he will not do it for you because it's what he's told you to do. You're the one that has to do these things, and when you do, he will help you. But he has sent you the Holy Spirit to help you identify these things so that you can cut down anything at the root that's contrary to his spirit and to his word. Let's close this session, and I'll close out with prayer. Jesus, I thank you that you've given me some understanding about this, and you've given me the privilege to talk about it and to help others to understand it. And I would just simply ask, Lord, that after they've heard this message, Lord, that they would go and they would ask you if these things be true, and they would do like the Bereans, sit down, open their word, and look at it for themselves, and ask Holy Spirit to come in and show them whether these things be true. Lord, if I said anything that's not of you, I repent. You know I want to lead people aright. I do not want to lead anyone down a wrong path. Lord, it is my heart and my soul's desire to see people set free. Lord, I thank you for the word. I bless the word. I seal this up. I bind and rebuke the enemy from coming in and stealing the seed. Lord, I ask that you would water the word, that it comes forth and it brings fruit and it will bring deliverance in people's lives. And I thank you and praise you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friend, if you've never made Jesus your Savior and Lord, would you please do it today? You can't afford to put it off one more minute. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus. Whatever situation you may be in, Jesus can take your life and make something beautiful of it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except that he comes through me. And Romans 10:9 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. So if you would like to know him, repeat this prayer with me today and really mean it from your heart. Say after me, Jesus, I choose this day to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God, sent to the earth to pay the price for my sin by your death. I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today in heaven. Please take my life and do something great with it. Friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, then today is your birthday. Today is the day that you were born again into eternal life. We suggest that you find a good Bible-believing local church where you can connect with other Christian believers and grow in the Lord. This message has been brought to you today free of charge by the friends and ministry partners of Renaissance Christian Fellowship. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you please consider partnering with us to help send the gospel message to others around the world? For more information on how to donate to this ministry, please visit our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash RCF World, or you may send us an email at contact us at rcfworld.org. Again, that's contact us at rcfworld.org. You may give by debit or credit card directly at paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Again, that's paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Thank you for helping us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world.